There's no denying that LCD technology has been a revolutionary feature in nearly every device we've called a display over the past 20 years. From the big-headed CRT monitors of the old days to the slim LCDs we have now, displays have become synonymous with liquid crystal. Let's explore the unique and clever principles of LCD technology. The CRT display, which dominated humanity for over 100 years, refers to the cathode ray tube invented by German physicist Carl Ferdinand Braun in 1897. In the mid-70s, LG, then known as Gold Star, was already making excellent CRT TVs. For those of you who are a bit older, you might remember the sheer joy of just hearing a crackling voice on the radio. And when the legendary Korean wrestler Kim Il delivered his famous headbutts on TV, it was so captivating that it left everyone in awe, making us all go, wow. Just like Kim Il's famous headbutt, the principle behind CRT technology begins with a similar kind of impact. The screen part of the CRT is coated with phosphors. It's like hitting someone and they go, ouch! Just like making a sound when you stimulate these phosphors, they emit light. By hitting some areas and not hitting others, we can display text or images on the screen. So the next step is to create a mechanism that can precisely hit the phosphors coated on the screen. So they installed a precise gun at the very back of the CRT. Picture the marines from StarCraft who just spawned and are standing around clueless. Then they get a stim pack and dash in a straight line like crazy. This precise gun gets powered up and the electrons from the back start speeding up, aligning themselves in a nearly uniform formation. Boom, boom, boom. These electron beams are launched and then precisely bent by magnetic fields in the CRT center. This guides them to find and strike the phosphors they need to hit. When these phosphors get hit, they emit light, allowing us to see the image on the screen. While black and white CRTs only needed one electron gun, color CRTs required three electron guns to hit the red, green, and blue phosphors. These displays were usually referred to as CDT when used for computer monitors and CPT when used for televisions, which had larger dot sizes and lower resolution. It's true that CRTS were humanity's only display technology for over 100 years, but they needed enough space for the electron beam to accelerate and hit the desired target accurately. For these fundamental reasons, CRT monitors and televisions had increasingly massive backsides as the screen size grew, leading to some truly gigantic and cumbersome designs. Unlike the overwhelming backside of the CRT, it boasted a very flat backside. That technology's name, LCD, or Liquid Crystal Display, has come a long way from its early days to the advanced screens we see today, like Samsung's QLED and Apple's latest iPads and MacBook Pros with mini LED technology. All these improvements are built on the foundation of LCD. Unlike CRTs, which used electron guns to shoot beams at the screen in a kind of pixel-by-pixel -pixel battle. Think back to when we were kids and made stained glass with cellophane in elementary school, when we held it up to fluorescent lights or sunlight. We saw a rainbow of colors, right? LCDs operate on a similar principle. They shine light across the entire screen from a backlight panel at the back, and then use layers, much like cellophane, to filter and produce the colors you see. By adjusting the amount of light for each point and passing it through color filters, which are like cellophane, we can display various colors. The key components for controlling the light here are the liquid crystal and the polarizer. Whether it's from a light bulb, a fluorescent lamp, a candle, or even the sun, light always radiates outward in waves from its source in all directions. However, if you place a polarizer film in front of it, it acts like a sneaky filter, allowing only light waves oscillating in one direction to pass through. Now if you add another polarizer film and align it in the same direction, the light will continue to pass through. But as you start twisting the second film out of alignment, less and less light will be able to get through. As the angle decreases and eventually reaches 90 degrees, no light can pass through. In an LCD, the backlight shines through polarizers that are oriented 90 degrees to each other. If light were to pass through in this state, no light would get through, and your monitor would stay off forever. However, by placing liquid crystals between these polarizers, we can ingeniously control the amount of light. Essentially, liquid crystals, which can transmit light like glass, allow light to pass through if their structure is twisted, following the twist pattern. Moreover, the twist in the liquid crystal can be controlled based on whether voltage is applied or not. When no voltage is applied, the liquid crystals are twisted. Light passing through the first polarizer changes direction and passes the second polarizer, offset by 90 degrees. When voltage is applied, the liquid crystal molecules align neatly. Light passing through the first polarizer doesn't change direction. It goes through the liquid crystal layer, but can't pass the second polarizer. This polarizer is oriented at 90 degrees. So the amount of light passing through depends on the voltage applied to the liquid crystal. This is how an LCD works. To change the state of each liquid crystal point on the screen, different voltages need to be applied. 
A transistor acts like a switch, determining whether current should flow based on the applied voltage. In devices with low resolution, like calculators, data is transmitted directly to each pixel. However, for standard definition displays in TVs or monitors, the sheer number of pixels makes it impractical to design a circuit that individually applies voltage to each pixel. The number of connections increases significantly. However, with thin film transistor, instead of needing millions of connectors, we can set addresses horizontally and vertically, applying different voltages to each. By adjusting the voltage differences between the horizontal and vertical line, we can design the system with only thousands of connectors in each direction. So by applying different voltages to each screen point through the thin film transistor, we can control the liquid crystal twisting. This determines how much the light passing through the backlight and first polarizer will be twisted. Thus, we can control the light passing to the screen, achieving success. In the end, our eyes can see many colors based on the red, green, and blue mix. CRTs with their electron guns firing beams at phosphorus needed a lot of space at the back, making them bulky and awkwardly large. But LCDs with their flat backlights, TFTs, polarizers, liquid crystals, and color filters could be designed incredibly thin, eliminating the bulky backside and quickly becoming popular among the masses. In the video, we focused on the early LCD design, especially the TN type. Because of its inherent flat panel structure that produces light, it looks best when viewed straight on. However, even a slight change in angle can cause differences in color and brightness, leading to a limited viewing angle. Also, when the screen changed quickly, after images appeared, causing delays. Because of this, even in the early 2010s, pro gamers preferred CRT monitors. They could instantly display light when the fluorescent tube was struck. And for LCDs, they moved away from the TN method, arranging liquid crystals vertically. This was combined with recent backlight technology. With TFT and precise pixel design, high contrast ratios were achieved. This made vertical alignment, VA, technology popular among display experts. By applying voltage to twist parts of the liquid crystal, VA's narrow viewing angles improved. This led to the development of in-plane switching, IPS, technology. Over the past 20 years, these technologies have kept evolving. With VA, IPS, SVA, and the advent of mini-LED and QLED displays, we'll delve into the specifics of each technology at a later point. Right now, let's take a trip down memory lane. 